Hi, welcome to CC Mute in Greenland. We're going to be talking about the water supply here. Um, as you can see uh, on the right of the picture, there is a little building called the Tap House, and that's where people uh, with unpiped homes will go collect the water. And that is a common thing in villages in Greenland. We're going to look a little bit at the context first. Uh, the human right to water according to UN, has five criteria that uh, water should be physically accessible, insufficient amounts, affordable, uh, safe to use and acceptable for the users. And we're going to look at some of those aspects in the presentation. So first you can see Greenland uh, as, has a, an ice cap covering most of the country, so most of the population will be living on the coast. The size of Greenland is about 2,600 kilometers uh, north-south across and 1,200 kilometers across east-west. So it's quite a big island. It's the largest in the world after, if we don't include Australia as an island. And the population is 56,000 people, so it's quite spread out. Uh, you can see now the uh, squares are the 17 towns and then the rounds, the circles are the 52 settlements. There are a few also uh, airport settlements and farms, but for the water supply, these are the ones we'll be looking at. Uh, this here uh, is the island of Umanak. It's one example of a town. In the largest cities, most houses have piped water uh, and some older neighborhoods are now being piped. Uh, and in other cities like Umanak, which is about 1500 people, a lot of the houses will have a tank inside and then there is a light that goes red when the tank is is empty and then a truck comes and fills your tank for you. So the water is stagnant inside the house but then it's piped to hot and cold taps inside. And some and people can also go to tap houses outside to collect water. And then in the settlements where they may not have enough space for trucks or maybe the terrain is too steep or as you can see here uh, also it's smaller populations it's under 500 people. They typically don't have truck delivery uh, and only 20% of the homes are piped. So most people will go out to a tap house to collect the water. Of the 52 settlements, we can see that three here in red don't have a water supply, a treated water supply provided. All the other 49 have one. Uh, and so, so in the 49 settlements that have a treated water supply, 20% uh, of the homes are piped, which corresponds to the um, optimal level of access as defined by WHO. You can see on the right the four levels. When the tap is on the premises, it's considered optimal. And that's the case for 20% of the homes in the villages. And then the other 80%, they typically go to a tap house, which is on average about 90 meters away from their home. And then in those three villages with no treated water supply, uh, about 2% of the population, they go in nature to collect it. And in fact, water from nature, untreated, is a preferred drinking water source for a lot of people, including in piped homes. And in particular, the pieces of uh, floating ice from iceberg breakoff called Nilek. That's one of the favored um, water sources for drinking. And then here you can see a service house, which is a place, the, the blue building on the right next to the water tank, which is where people can go shower and do laundry when they uh, live in, a, in an unpiped home in a settlement. So here we have the four levels of access to water according to WHO. Inadequate is below five liters per day per person, roughly. Basic up to 20 liters, intermediate around 50, and then optimal is above 100 liters per day per person. And of course, uh, the health risk increases as the daily consumption decreases. In Greenland overall, in 2020, the daily consumption per capita was 104 liters, which is very similar to the Danish numbers that same year and is in the optimal level. And it's even a bit more than this in the cities because that's where most of the piping is, 114 liters per day per person. But then in the settlement, on average, it's only 29 liters per day per capita. And then if we zoom in on the settlements, the piped homes actually use more about 55 liters per day and then the unpiped use 13 liters per day per person that they collect from a tap house and bring into their home and store there. And then to that we can add use from the public shared buildings, including the service house, the shower and, and laundry place, that adds in a, about 8 liters per day per person in those villages. But so for unpiped homes in rural Greenland, it's still in the basic level of access, about 20 liters per day per person, which comes with a relatively high 
um, risk for health in theory. So in unpiped homes, that's the main focus here, uh, people will collect water from the tap house and then they carry it home and store it into those jugs and buckets. When testing the water in those containers, we can see that the number of uh, a category of bacteria called heterotrophics increases about 10 to hundreds of times in half of those containers. And this can be done to a biofilm growing inside, for instance, inside of the jug. And then also in a quarter of those containers, we see the appearance of coliform bacteria, which were not present in the distributed water. This means that there was some sort of contamination of the water, probably at some point, either through handling, using a smaller jug to dip in water to take it out, or using an unclean bucket. And in unpiped homes also for hand washing, they will use typically a, a plastic basin that has a little bit of soapy water in the bottom. You can see it in the sink here. And you just rub that water on your hands and then dry them directly without rinsing because there's no running water point. So all of those practices are typical in unpiped homes of, among others, uh, the rural Arctic, and they have been linked to waterborne diseases from drinking contaminated water and some water washed diseases, which are the ones you catch or transmit for lack of hygiene and being able to wash hands in particular. Uh, water washed diseases in particular are underreported in the Arctic. So to conclude, in rural Greenland, 80% of the residents live in unpiped homes with a daily water consumption, which is in the basic uh, level of access around 20 liters per day per capita, which is potentially a threat to public health. Uh, the quality of the water when it's distributed is good, but then it degrades uh, in some cases during storage in the homes. So the questions are, should we pipe all the homes? Uh, this um, would be costly, obviously, and also would put an added strain on local raw water resources, which sometimes may not uh, be able to support additional use. That's a question that remains. In the meantime, for unpiped homes, we could use containers that are easier to maintain, to clean inside of, so that there is no biofilm growing and uh, less contamination of the water sources. So now we have an overview of the water supply in Greenland and the challenges, especially in the villages and for the unpiped homes. Thank you. <laughs>